Buying or selling a property can be a little different in the province of Quebec compared to other provinces across Canada. And that's not just because we speak both French and English in the province. In today's video, I'm going to share with you exactly what those differences are. But first, let's roll the intro. Hi everyone, Josh here. And before we start, I just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button and turn on the post notifications so that I can continue to make more content like this in the future. If you're thinking about purchasing or selling a property in Montreal or the province of Quebec in general, it's important to understand the differences when it comes to rules, interpretation, and the way the buying and selling process works in Quebec compared to other provinces in Canada. In general, one of the most well-known things about Quebec is the fact that we speak both French and English. However, that's not the only thing that is different from our fellow Canadian provinces when it comes to real estate or its laws. In fact, unlike other provinces in Canada that follow common law, in Quebec, the law is based on the civil code. The civil code is based on a detailed written record of the law, whereas common law, on the other hand, which is used by all other Canadian provinces, evolves over time based on precedents set by court judgments. This would be the first thing that differentiates Quebec real estate compared to the rest of Canada. Because if there are any judgments to be made in a real estate transaction, we would follow the civil code in Quebec as opposed to common law. Moving on, in Quebec, real estate brokers are governed by an association called OACIQ. The OACIQ is responsible for overseeing all real estate brokers across the province. The main mission of the OACIQ is to protect the public by enforcing the Real Estate Brokerage Act. By doing so, they oversee the real estate profession and ensure real estate transactions are carried out properly and ethically. The OACIQ is also responsible for issuing and maintaining real estate brokers licenses and providing continuing education among other things. From my understanding, land transfer taxes aren't only unique to Quebec, but what is unique about our land transfer taxes is its nickname. Land transfer taxes in Quebec are more commonly known as the welcome tax. Funny enough, the land transfer tax is known as the welcome tax because of Jean Bienvenu, who was the Quebec minister who was responsible for implementing the tax. The last name of Jean Bienvenu in, tr in English translates to welcome, which is why we say welcome tax. What is also different about the land transfer tax in Quebec, unlike BC or Ontario, is that the tax is not paid the same day as the official sale. In fact, you should usually expect to receive the land transfer tax bill about four to six weeks after notarizing your purchase as a welcome gift to your new home. Speaking of notarizing in Quebec, all real estate transactions must be notarized by a notary in order to be considered an official sale. In other provinces, home buyers can usually choose between a lawyer or a notary. However, in Quebec, that is not the case. The notary is responsible for reviewing the titles of ownership, creating the deed of sale, reviewing the certificate of location, creating the statement of adjustments, and registering the sale with the land registry office. They are also responsible for dispersing all proceeds to the parties involved in the transaction. In Quebec, the buyer is usually responsible for choosing the notary and paying the notary fees, which can range between $1,300 to $1,800 on average. Another interesting fact about Quebec as opposed to other provinces in Canada is that we not only use the national website realtor.ca to view listings, but many buyers and sellers in Quebec will also use the provincial website centris.ca as a more popular alternative to view listings. When a property is listed in Quebec, the listing will automatically appear on both websites, realtor.ca and centris.ca, among other ones. Finally, the last difference between Quebec and other provinces in Canada is the lingo and terms we use when it comes to real estate. When dealing with the paperwork in Quebec real estate, you will often see a property referred to as an immovable property. The term generally describes the property and is just another way of saying the house or the condo. Some other different terms we use are hypothèque instead of mortgage in the official documents, promise to purchase instead of purchase agreement, and certificate of location instead of land survey. 
Hopefully this video will give you a good idea of some of the differences in Quebec as opposed to other provinces in Canada and will help you better prepare yourself for when you decide to buy or sell real estate in Montreal or Quebec. If you've made it this far, I want you to let me know below in the comments any other differences you might know of that exist in Quebec and not in the rest of Canada. Drop a comment below and let me know. If ever you're looking to purchase a property in Montreal or its surrounding areas and have any questions, send me a message or an email and I'll be happy to help. You can find my contact info in the drop down right below this video. That's it for this week's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications for more content like this and I'll catch you next time.